This is Laura with Smarter Tech Teaching. This tutorial will help you learn how to change your font and color settings in Smart Notebook 11. First of all, let's take a look at pen settings. If you click on this icon in the toolbar, another toolbar will pop out with different pen colors that you can choose from. These pen colors are in addition to the four pen colors that you have in your pen tray black, blue, red, and green. You can choose one of these pen colors and just start writing, or you can also pick a color from the palette over here on the right. You can set these pens to be kind of like your favorite pen colors. Some teachers like to set these colors to be different than the black, red, blue, and green that are in the pen tray so that they're all set to go with the right thickness and line style that you like. The way to change these default colors is to tap on the pen color that you want to change, go over to the properties tab, this you'll find these tabs on either the right side or the left side depending on how your interface is set up. It's the fourth tab down, the A with the color palette next to it. From this window, um, where it says line style, uh, select the color that you would like the new the pen choice to be. Um, click the line thickness. You can also change the style, whether you want a solid, a dotted line, or a dashed line, or a combination of those. If you click on the arrows and scroll down, you can also see that you have a choice for how you want the line to start and how you want the line to end. Um, and then when you have the line looking with the color and the thickness and the line styles the way you would like them to be, click on Save Tool Properties. And you'll notice that particular pen choice that I had selected is now that pink uh, line. So it's there ready for me to use when I need it. Next, let's take a look at how to change line settings. It's really the same procedure as it is for pen settings. This time, click on the line icon from your toolbar, and you'll see another toolbar for lines that pop right out. Again, if you just want to pick a color for a line, um, you can click on the color palette that drops down, and you can choose one of these colors, and it will keep making lines for you until you change it. Or you can set these as your favorites. Um, so let me pick this. I'm going to pick the second one. I'm going to go over to the Properties tab. Again, Line Style is selected. I can change my color. Let me see. Let me make this one blue and thick. Um, I'm just going to keep it solid, but you can make any of those other selections. The important thing to remember is to click on Save Tool Properties. And now you can see that that is a thick, thicker line. Um, Let's take a look back over here again at Tool Properties. Uh, one thing I want to point out is under the Color Palette, if you click on More, okay, you can choose any color within just by tapping anywhere in this big palette. Uh, and it will show you a little preview of what the color looks like down below. And if you want to change the amount of hue, and saturation and luminosity, you can do that just by dragging up and down this slider. And then once you have found the color that you want, if you click OK, it will then become the color that you have asked for for that particular line. And you can also use that to change your default colors too. Let's take a look at the shape and polygon settings. There are two buttons in the menu. One is for shapes. The other one is for regular polygons. If you click on these icons, you'll see another pop-out menu. Okay, we're going to take a look at shapes. In the toolbar, there are 10 shapes displayed. If you click on the drop-down arrow, you will see some more options too. So anytime you see that drop-down arrow, be sure to choose one. So, for example, if I wanted to make squares that were a certain color, one thing that I could do is come over again to my color palette and uh, pick a fill color and pick a line color. And once I've picked my fill and my line color, anytime I place a square on the page, it will be filled with that particular color fill and line. 
You may, though, at some point, want to make a default color and line style. For example, if your class has pattern blocks and they use yellow hexagons, if you want to make that hexagon automatically come up yellow, you can set the default change. Click on the shape that you want to change to default, go again to your Properties tab, and choose, you'll be in Fill Effects, choose Solid Fill, and from Solid Fill, you can change that color. I'm going to click on Save Tool Properties. If I wanted to also change the color line, I could click on Line Style and choose a different color and also say Save Tool Properties. Now, if you look, you'll see my hexagon is always going to come out a Solid Fill yellow with a yellow line. If you decide that you don't like changes that you've made to your defaults, if you just go back, make sure that it's selected, go to your Properties tab once again, um, and this time we're going to give it a black line style, Save Tool Properties. We'll go back to Fill Effect and say No Fill, Save Tool Properties. And if you look here, you can now see that it's just back to the standard hexagon. One more change we're going to look at today are your font settings. Um, click on the font icon at the top. Whatever font is in this first position is your default font. So that's an important one that you are going to know how to change. Your default font is what comes up if you just start typing. Let me go back here. If you just start typing, text will appear, and it appears in the default font, which is Arial 16. That's very small. Smart recommends that you have your font at least at a point 28 in order for your students to be able to see it from a distance. So let's take a look at how to change that. I'm going to click on the font icon, and out pops my menu. You can store up to like six favorite font settings with the style and the size and the color that you like. Um, but as I said, this first one is really the most important. I'm going to click on that. Um, and one thing that you want to make sure is that nothing on the page is selected. So I'm going to go back up to my little select tool and come down here. And I don't have anything selected on the page. My text box isn't open. Um, it's right there. OK. So I've clicked on that. I'm going to come back to my Properties tab. And you can see I'm now in a text style window. I'm going to find Comic Sans. I don't know. I'm a Comic Sans kind of gal, probably my first grade uh, background. And I'm going to change this to a 28 and change this to blue. And if I wanted to make it bold by default, however, any of these items that I have to choose from, I could save and change, including line spacing within the text box if I wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to change the font and the size and the color. I'm going to click Save Tool Properties. And now you can see that in this box, it has changed to a blue Comic Sans. So if I just start typing, now I have Comic Sans as my default. Just to show you what happens, if we go to this font and I'm in the first one, see how I have this text box selected that it says now I have Comic Sans? If I come over here to the Properties tab and I want to make a change to that font, I can't. Well, actually, it's, it looks like it's letting me. I think it went to another box. But if I click on this first one, um, if, if you've got a text box selected, you may have a problem being able to access the Save Tool Properties button. I've had difficulty with that in the past sometimes and couldn't figure out why. Um, I just make sure now that I go back to my arrow, my selection tool, make sure that nothing on the page is selected, and I have much better success making sure that I have that Save Tool Properties button on my page. I just want to say thank you very much. If you would like more information, please go to my website at smartertechteaching.com. Um, have a great day and enjoy using your smart board. Goodbye.